Yo, it's your boy Lilo Jones, and you watching Lilo in the Garden. Yeah, today on In The Garden, we out here kicking with Mr. Murray today. You know what I'm saying? He getting it in the way he get it in in his garden. You feel me? My, my. What an interesting day. We have Lee about to get Lee spot right. So I'm going to trim them. I'm going to keep them at bay. I'm going to let everything do what it do. I'm going to uh, cut my old asparagus down a little bit because he's shading out my uh, my little squash plant. I'm cutting down a little bit. I ain't going to cut him down too much because he got that good asparagus. Now asparagus, you have to plant it and wait. You have to be patient. It takes about two to three years to get it where it needs to be. What I have done over here was to stand my tomatoes up vertically. I have shifted them from north to south. But of course, at this point here, I want them to go vertical because the sun is at this point, being the summer time is up, straight up and down. So what I gotta do is, I gotta get some uh, colors that I don't have at this point. And I gotta stand these up. I'm gonna put a little trellis over here to keep the sun down. So that it does not heat or overheat the tomatoes because I will endure tomato scald. They'll be scalded out. Okay. We're going in. We're going in hard. Oh. Who? They? Now I didn't dump I didn't want to. I didn't bump I think he do. I think you're gonna do what he do. What I did right there, Mr. Murray? Sugar baby. Sugar baby. Sugar baby. He got seeds up in him, so he can proliferate. You heard what he said. That, that sugar baby got seeds. We don't play that mess now. I told y'all before. If your watermelon ain't got seeds, we can't be friends, dog. I mean, if you can't spit out seeds, what is your purpose? Let's go. Therefore, to the okra. Into being. But you know what? It's a good thing. See, you got to pick okra every day. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these big boys. I'm going to chop them off. I'm going to use them for seed. Now if I wanted to go Martha Stewart, I could take these big boys and put them off in the freezer for about three days they would be tricked and thinking they done went through a whole winter cycle and I could throw them in next week but there are some plants you have to pick every day because they proliferate and okra bees one of them and okra is an interesting plant because we bought the seed over here on our backs, in our clothes, in slave ship from Africa. Alright, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. I'm up here now, back. And I got the curly face. I dig and I dig and I dig and I dig. I can't get rid of, rid of it, but it is very invasive. It comes back. I take it out. It comes back again because the roots be deep down in the ground. But guess what? I got the good, good 
Muscadine out of Pike County. Pike County ain't too far from here. And I asked the dude about pruning. He said, prune till they bleed. But what I'm doing is, I'm pruning back to the uh, berry. Because what's going on is, you got too much fruit, you ain't gonna get no big fruit. So I ain't got no problem with that. I done learned. I done learned. Whoa, wait, wait. I got some berries on there. I got them. Yeah, can't cut, cut them berries. Can't cut them berries, car. Berries eat. Now look at him. You go to Walmart and get you a net. Cause when them birds, know them berries down there, they coming down through there. And they going up through there. And you got to put that net. The net don't cost but seven dollars. Even the birds know how to pull a J move, ain't that right, Mr. Murray? I waited too late to put the net on my blueberries. And the birds came through and they said, oh yeah, he got them. Let's get him. And they got them. Now, I consulted with a dude about Sometimes you can prune. The best time for pruning actually is in December. But he said, if you prune even to the plant bleeds, it ain't no problem because pruning is what makes the fruit plant come forth with fruit. Right about now, I'm uh. Taking some tomatoes and I'm going to cut the dead wood off so that it does not transfer the leaf rot, brown spot into the tomatoes. A lot of people just give up right about now. But it is not in my nature to give up. You have to keep on keeping on. So what I got right here, I done cut the dead wood off. And I'm fixing to post them up on some bamboo. And if I can't get as high as I want to be, I'm going to have to uh, annex another piece of string. Now, some people don't know how to tie knots. You've seen movies where people get loose from knots. But this one right here is a sure knot. So let's see what we got here. We got hang him over the bamboo and hope we don't get bamboo. Ow. Uh, every day you learn something new in the garden i told you baby stand them tomatoes up you know what i'm saying they cut out that old leaves off on them so that mold and that uh leaf rot won't run to the other parts of the plant you dig we had an intermission but we back at it man and i'm a boy mr murray in that all white everything okay where we going now, Mr. Murray? We're popping. Where we going down here? We're going to get a few tomatoes. We're going to have to get them off the bottom to keep the predators from getting them because they work off the bottom. The squirrels work off the bottom. The rabbits work off the bottom. Uh, the mole work underground. And here we are on the box. So, look at here. I ain't here for two plants. Or maybe two plants. And the amazing thing is that the, even the deer, they can smell the sugar in the plant. 
you got to realize the tomato is the fruit. And the deer have taught me how to smell sugar from 50 feet away. I did not know how to do that, but I have acclimated myself to the situation. Ergo, I can smell sugar 50 feet away. Ooh, the tomatoes are mounting up. They're mounting up. I think I got two. I think I got three. Well, you got to realize I have some determinant tomatoes and I have some indeterminate tomatoes. Now, determinate tomatoes grow at such a pace where they make because there is what, what most people who on the farm and they all made at the same time whereby they could can tomatoes and put them up for the winter. Well, I have determinant and indeterminate. Now, indeterminate tomatoes will grow on and on now, if you get some brandy wine tomatoes that come up out of New Jersey where the climate is cold, I have grown tomatoes into November and December. So what I have to do is identify and, of course, I have to uh, segregate my tomatoes. Now, I'm going to take these tomatoes and put them with my stuff. I know y'all see me with this black and mild in my mouth. It's just a pacifier. Here is a fig tree. This fig tree has been out here for a year approximately. They produce figs two times in the same year. That makes it special. Now, I had about 8 to 20 feet, and of course, my rabbit gets up on his hind legs, and he eats the feed because it has sugar in it. Okay? What I'm doing is I'm cutting the vine. Because if you don't cut the vine, you end up growing vine, not watermelon. And I see a sugar baby. And I think he need to go. Oh. Oh. Yeah. This gym is right. I'm going to put him up here with my other sugar baby. And I said, wow, I got them sugar babies. This is a brand new wine. It comes out of New Jersey. The leaf configuration is different. I did not plan him. He's a volunteer. So, rather than to grow him up vertical, I laid him sideways so that he could get in where he's sitting. And I got a cucumber here. He just popped up from nowhere, from somewhere, but I think if I raise these bad boys up off the ground, I get some more. Whoa! Wait a minute! Hold up! I have an epiphany. I have seen 
something that maybe I shouldn't have seen, but I took it upon myself to stretch my squash out horizontally, and here we go. Ugh. That is a lemon squash. He looks like a lemon, smells like a lemon, but it tastes like squash. Is it a very unusual thing? It's yellow on the outside, has a center of lemon, it's green on the inside, and very succulent. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Hmm, it looks like we have a broken down shelf. But all is not lost. The tomato plant has an amazing reproductive product whereby shoots sprout out, roots sprout out, throw a little water down through here and let it do what it do. That is the brandy wine. Brandy wine was propagated up in Preston, New Jersey. I love them brandy wines. You can grow them darn near to November or December. Yeah, man, we about to catch up out of here, but man, I want to tell you thank you to Mr. Murray, you know what I'm saying, for letting us do what it does and getting this good knowledge off in this thing, you know what I'm saying. We'll catch y'all later on. And I'm glad I don't have no warrants, y'all. <laughs> Peace. It's going to be difficult to get them to come up to the top. There are tadpoles in there. And I have grown cat poles until they had four legs and a tail. Whereby they were going to morph into a frog. My purpose is, if there are frogs, we are fine. I have heard that when the frogs cease to exist, man will follow.